Bonjour! In today's video, we are going to talk about compound tenses in French, besides the passé composé. Quick reminder! Do you remember how to form the passé composé? You take the verb avoir, or sometimes être, and you conjugate it at the present indicative, and you add the past participle of the verb. For instance, j'ai mangé des fruits, I ate some fruit. With avoir, the past participle is invariable, except when the direct object is posited before the verb. The past participle agrees in gender and number with the direct object. For example, les fruits que j'ai mangés étaient délicieux. The fruit I ate was delicious. With être, the past participle agrees in gender and number with the subject. For instance, elles sont venues en train, they came by train. Verbs that are conjugated with the auxiliary être indicate a state, for instance, rester, to stay, a movement, for example, aller, to go, or a change, for instance, devenir, to become. All the pronominal verbs are also used with the auxiliary être, for instance, se lever, to get up. Good news! All these rules apply to other compound verbs. Only the tense of the auxiliary changes. Note that like for the passé composé, these compound tenses indicate a past action compared with the original tense. The first one is the plus que parfait, or plus perfect tense. It indicates a past action that took place before another past action. To form the plus perfect, you conjugate the auxiliary avoir, or être, at the imperfect, and you add the past participle of the verb. For instance, quand je suis rentré, il était déjà parti. When I came home, he had already left. In English, you translate the plus que parfait with the past perfect, had plus past participle. Another compound tense is the passé antérieur, or past interior. It derives from the passé simple. Like the passé simple, the past interior is a literary or formal tense. It indicates a past action that took place before another past action, but this action is more precise or briefer than with the plus perfect tense. To form the past interior, you conjugate the auxiliary avoir or être at the past historique and you add the past participle of the verb. For example, nous mangeâmes le repas après qu'il l'eût préparé. We had dinner after he had cooked it. In English, you translate the passé antérieur with the past perfect. Note that English does not distinguish between plus perfect and past antérieur. Let's move on to the future, with the futur antérieur, or future perfect tense. A past future? Indeed, the futur antérieur indicates a future action that will take place before another future action. To form the futur antérieur, you conjugate the auxiliary avoir or être at the future and you add the past participle of the verb. For instance, je lui pardonnerai quand il se sera excusé. I will forgive him when he will have apologized. You translate it in English with the future perfect will have plus past participle. So far, we have dealt with tenses of the indicative mood, but this also applies to other moods, for instance, the conditional. So let's see the conditional passé or conditional perfect. It is used to indicate what would have happened in the past under certain circumstances. For example, si je l'avais écouté, Je n'aurais pas commis cette erreur. If I had listened to her, I would not have made that mistake. Note that the verb in the hypothetic clause introduced by si or if is at the plus perfect. Once again, you conjugate the auxiliary avoir or être at the present conditional and you add the past participle of the verb. You translate the conditional perfect with the English equivalent would have plus past participle. Easy, isn't it? Au revoir.